Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tristan and today we're going to be talking about how much money you could have at the end of college if instead of playing video games throughout high school and college, you saved up that money instead. And if you enjoy this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also give it a like that helps out my channel a ton. Now this comes from someone who played video games a lot pretty much throughout my whole entire life. I kind of remember the first video games I started playing was probably when I was around like six or seven years old, maybe even a little bit younger than that. My brother got Nintendo 64 for Christmas and we played all those Mario Party games, Mario Karts and things like that. However, when you're that young, really under the age of 14, 15, it really doesn't matter if you're playing video games versus going out and doing other things, at least in terms of how much money you're gonna be able to save. As a kid, you probably wanna have fun, enjoy yourself, spend your money on things that make you happy. And really, that's kind of what you should be doing as a kid because that's what those years are for. And I know every situation is different. However, when you turn 15, you know, 15, 16, you're in high school, you really do have an opportunity to get a job. Some people may not need to, but a lot of people do. And so getting a job is a really good thing to do in high school. Now, when I was in high school, I still continued to play a lot of video games. You know, I would start spending two, three, sometimes even four or five hours a day, depending upon what else I had to do. Um, I was heavily involved in playing soccer, and so that took up a lot of my time as well. But in my other spare time, I didn't really go out and do things a lot with friends, especially because I was moving all over the world a lot with my dad's job. And so I would spend a lot of time indoors playing video games. And really, I know that most people, including myself probably, if they stopped playing video games, they wouldn't take all that time and just go get a job or something like that. However, that could be a really productive thing to do, and that's kind of the scenario I want to talk about today. And there's three areas that I want to talk about in terms of ways you can end up saving more money. The first area is going to be the money that you spend on the consoles, the games themselves, whether that be an Xbox, a PlayStation, a computer, a Nintendo Switch, whatever it may be, even your phone games. After that, I want to talk about in-game app purchases or in-game purchases, whether that's buying skins or buying like gems or things like that that help you progress in the game or make your character look a little bit better. And then finally, I want to talk about the fact of instead of spending the time playing the video games, you could spend that time instead working. And the time span we're doing is about eight years. So we're going to do your four years in high school, ninth to 12th grade, and then four years in college. So freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year in college. And within those eight years, most people will probably have two different consoles. Now, again, there are some people that have a lot more. There are some people that will only have one console. However, each console will probably cost you about $300 unless you're buying a really high-end gaming PC, which could cost thousands of dollars. However, we're going to stick with that $300 range. Let's say you bought an Xbox, and let's say you bought like a Nintendo Switch or something like that. Now with that, when most people play video games, there are some people who buy a lot of different little games and spend a little bit of time on each game. However, the majority of people I would probably say buy one or two games a year and spend the majority of their time playing one game. So like if you're into first person shooters, maybe you spent all your time playing Call of Duty or Halo. If you're more into computer games, maybe you're like into League of Legends or Fortnite or Dota or something like that, you spend a lot of time on your computer in one game. And so Really, there are a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. However, what I'm gonna say is you spend about $60 per game and you buy two new big games a year. So about $120 per year on new games. Now let's say there's another $75 of extra things that you need to pay for, whether that's like membership, monthly membership fees, things like that, whether that's like Xbox Live or you have to pay to play the game, or that's like new controllers, new chargers or headsets or those sort of things. Now over those eight years, you're gonna be buying two new consoles at about $300 each. You're gonna be buying 16 different games at about $60 each. And then you're also gonna be spending $75 a year on just those extra things. And all that adds up to be about $2,160 over those eight years. Now that's not a ton of money. Right off the bat, eight years, $2,000 on entertainment really isn't that much if you compare it to other things that you could be doing. Like if you're, for example, really into snowboarding or something like that, you could spend $2,000 in one season just on getting your snowboarding gear and your pass. Now I get it, snowboarding is probably seen as a lot more productive by most parents and so they would probably be like, yeah, go spend that money on snowboarding, not video games. However, this video isn't for the parents, it's for you. Now the next thing we're gonna get into is those in-game or in-app purchases. And when I looked up the average that each player, now this is gonna be each person who actually plays video games, not just the average person in the world, but they spend about $84.67 on video games per year. And that'll come out to about $677.36 over the course of the eight years that you're in high school and college. Now you may wonder what those in-app purchases may be or in-game purchases may be. For the most part, those are gonna be what is called skins that make your character look better, 
or gems or points or coins or things like that that help you progress in the game quicker instead of spending time you spend money to make your base or your character stronger or grow bigger. And you may think that's crazy, like, oh, who spends money to essentially play the game because then you're not even playing the game, you're just paying money to get further ahead or to look cooler or things like that. Who really needs that? However, for most of these people that are playing video games, when you spend that much time in the game itself, it really is something that you enjoy and those things, whether it be like a $10 purchase or something like that, does make your experience a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit better, and overall makes your gaming experience better for you. Now, again, that's just my opinion. Some people really, you end up spending a ton of money and you're like, wow, this game wasn't actually fun and you feel like you wasted a ton of money. I personally would suggest not spending money on in games items. Yes, I have done it before. However, it's probably not the most financially smart thing to do. And on this channel, we talk about things to make your financial wealth or your wealth grow higher and spending money on things like that probably isn't the best way to go. All right, so we're about eight years in. Let's say we've spent almost about $3,000, whether that be through in-game purchases or through buying like consoles and hardware and things like that. Really, $3,000 over eight years isn't bad at all. That's less than $500 a year. And really spending that much money on gaming isn't that bad. It does seem like a lot depending upon how much money you're making, especially when you're in high school, that could be a big chunk of money. However, $500 a year isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. And so it's like, oh, Tristan, at the end of eight years, I could only save $3,000. Well, then I might as well just play video games and enjoy myself because that's not bad at all. But here's where the biggest part comes in. And that's going to be the time that you actually spend playing those video games and what you could have done instead. Now, the average high schooler plays about 2.5 hours worth of video games a day or 17.5 hours a week. Now let's say instead of spending that time playing video games, you got a part-time job instead. And even if that part-time job just paid you $7.25 an hour, which is minimum wage, at the end of your first year, you would have made $6,615. Now let's say you did that throughout all four years of high school, you would have made $26,460 by the time that you graduated. That's enough to pay for your college tuition in some places. Now after high school, the numbers go up quite a bit. So their average college student spends about 31 hours a week playing video games. And that may seem like a lot. However, in college, you have a lot more time to yourself, a lot more free time, because you're not structured from like the 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. class schedule. You have classes throughout the day, you spend a lot more time in the classroom and a lot more time studying on your own. And so really, most people spend that studying time kind of doing whatever they want. And so 31 hours a week is how much each college student spends playing video games. And in college, if you have a job, you're probably gonna at least get paid a little bit more. So let's say you're making $10 an hour. Now at 31 hours a week, you're gonna be making $16,120 a year, which if you do for all four years of college, you're gonna be making $64,480 throughout your college experience. Now you may say that most college students also have a job. However, there are a lot that don't. A lot of people's parents pay for it. You can get scholarships. There's a lot of things you can do where you actually don't have to work while you're going to college. And so working this way could just be working extra, or you could even get two jobs while you're in college. So do your first job and then also working again instead of playing video games. Now, if you add up what you would have made in high school and college, you would have made $90,940 by the time you graduated college, most likely around the age 22, 23, 24. And if you add on those extra costs that you spend like on the consoles and the games and everything throughout those eight years, you would have saved $93,777.36 by the time that you graduated college, almost $100,000 just by not playing video games and working and saving up that money instead, and that doesn't even include investing that money. Now, when you put it like that, that really does seem worth it. Like, hey, I would definitely rather graduate college with almost $100,000. And even if it seems unrealistic to spend that much time working instead of enjoying and playing video games, really, even if you cut that in half and save $50,000 by the time you graduate college, that gives you a great start and pretty much gives you everything that you need in terms of, hey, enough money for like an emergency fund, a car for rent and things like that. Now, I'm sure that one excuse that I'm sure people will think of is, hey, well, what if I became a professional video game player and made all that money back instead? Well, let me just give you a few statistics here. So I'm sure a lot of you know the saying that to become professional in something, you need to spend about 10,000 hours doing that. Now, if you're gonna be spending 10,000 hours doing that to become a professional video game player, let's say you spent those 10,000 hours working instead. And let's just say you did it at a $10 an hour rate, 
you would make $100,000. So again, kind of that same range, you at least need to make $100,000 playing video games professionally to make it worth it. Now, just to give you an idea, to be in the top 500 players who have earned the most money playing video games, and these are gonna be professional players, you have had to have made at least $267,000. And just keep in mind that that could be over a five to 10 year period to make that much money. Now, of course, if you're in the top 10, 20 players, most of those have made over a million dollars, and so that would be great if you could make it in there. However, the top 500 only making $267,000 over five to 10 years isn't the best pay rate. Now, when you go a little bit further of that, if we're going to that $100,000 range, only a few thousand players have actually made over $100,000 playing video games. And I know it's a new and growing industry and those numbers will probably go up. However, as of right now, that's kind of where it stands. And let's be real, most people watching this video probably aren't good enough to become a professional video game player. Again, that's probably why you're here watching YouTube instead of out playing those video games, making them big bucks. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up again, hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching to the end, and I will see you next time.